comme ça. Ah, oh. merci. Hello everybody, welcome to Blender Today, episode 105 or something, 110, I don't know how many episodes of Blender Today, but not many episodes, we have the opportunity to have a premiere. The premiere just happened a couple hours ago, it's the new first, new first short film ever made where Evie is more of a protagonist, but there's also some cycles in it and there's a bit of a bit of, bit of everything in this open movie project by the Blender Animation Studio. Today I have some of the team because it's a, it's actually a, like quite the team is much bigger, but some of the team is joining us today to talk about the latest open movie project, Coffee Run. Hello everybody. <laughs> Hello. 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 Apparently we are very Hi. quiet. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you? How's everybody? How's good. everybody? Good. Good. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom gave us all ice cream. Ice cream. Yes. How? <laughs> uh, so how how is it in like uh, how is it uh, how to have a premiere in this moment of Quarantine in like where you what, how did you finish even the film? Like where were you all together? We were you all like uh, I have during the premiere itself. We're all at least one and a half meter away from each other, which was kind of sad because yeah. it's really like this moment of triumph, and you want to just kind of give everybody a hug and I don't know, and then and you just like go yay and you look around and everybody's kind of has this distance between them and they have like this gentle nod some people have a mask on <laughs> it's it's not the same <laughs> you can't tell if people is like uh, like smiling or anything yeah exactly so i like i come out there i have a really long sharpie and i just kind of draw the smile on it's great <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> All right, so I I I think uh, wait wait there is some microphone issue volume is low. Uh, let me know if the, if the volume is a bit better now. I'm I'm pressing buttons here. So let's let's start from the beginning. So Coffee Run, Coffee Run started as a animation test. I last time I I heard about this this uh, this project, but then it evolved into a bit more than that. It's been how many how long was the project? When did it even start? Wait, Andy, when did it start? When I don't um, remember. I don't think I was there from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a question that uh, is aimed at me. Uh, and it's a really good question. I'm not saying I'm right now start checking with your some folders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what was it, like November? Something like that, maybe? I yeah, so. I think it really started in like January. Like after that, the Christmas uh, but like holiday. The, the, the very early start of it is, is like November. And that's when we were, well, I was tasked to do some uh, animation tests for like the new rig that we were going to release on the cloud, which yeah. is released, which is Rain. Great rig. Uh, Demeter, nice job. <laughs> and uh, as I'm, I'm kind of working with it, and it's like I really, I actually, I didn't tell you guys, but uh, maybe half a year earlier, I had this idea that I wanted to, you know, work a little bit like less do gaggy things where it's just all about making people laugh and it's all about making, you know, silly jokes or whatever. But I wanted to do something that's maybe a little bit more personal and doesn't necessarily mean it's like autobiographical. Autobiography I'm saying that wrong. Anyway, uh, that it, you know, it's not necessarily a a real glimpse into your childhood or something like that, but it's invoking very particular feelings that are true coming from somewhere. Uh, so half a year uh, like earlier, I had already like started making something. I was just like dabbling in it. 
but it was really drawing from personal experiences and it felt very self-indulgent and convoluted oh. and it's like as soon, as soon as you do something that is like from your own reality or from your own path it just seems like oh it's just wallowing in your own whatever so and i really didn't want to show this to anyone at the at the studio i was like oh my god i just like threw that in the drawer but then you know way later months later i was doing this uh, little animation test and i and i because we didn't have the face yet uh that was still being worked on i i basically had to test the body the the body mechanics um and in order to do that i thought well wouldn't it be interesting to then just do body mechanics a little bit further away and let maybe do kind of a side scroller-esque parkour thing and as I'm doing it, uh, things start kind of clicking where it's like, wait, what if I give her a backstory and I try to take some of those emotions that I wanted to kind of uh, express and what if I kind of funnel it into her and maybe give her some depth? And that way also it's like a vehicle that we create together and it's not just like, oh, here's the orphan with like a story about how I became an orphan or whatever. <laughs> Like the, the, the orphan is me, by the way, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean. So, which is like really self-indulgent. So it's more like no, it's a character that we created together and we worked on it together, and then people can like, you know, come to the table with their ideas on how to like facilitate that. Uh, uh, but yeah, it kind of evolved a little bit from there. So initially, the idea was that it would be this kind of very particular thing that would always loop, and the and the kind of broader idea was that. Um, that it's a person that is suffering from intrusive thoughts and the type of intrusive thought is, uh, is related to their memories. So their thought keeps bringing them back to particular memories that are, you know, highs and lows of their life or for the past year. Uh, but those, you know, those moments get a little bit tainted with every time you kind of go through them and maybe you see a little bit something different in them. But originally, it was only meant to be like a like forty five second thing that would just loop yeah. forever. That was the original idea. And the, the loop idea uh, it's it because it was an animation test, and usually loop a loop a loop. Or yeah, and that that was also it. It's it seemed like a very interesting idea, also because like whoa, that's something we've never done before. What if we release this thing, and it just loops forever? Here's the ten hour version. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And people just go insane. Yeah. Uh, and then at some point, it kind of evolved a little bit because it felt like well what if we put a little bit more effort into it and now we can really like do three cycles you know no more than that and then we kind of personalize each one of them so there's changes being made and as with memories they get a little bit tainted you think back on on a certain memory and whenever you think back on it maybe you start thinking about how could i have done it differently or you get really frustrated and you maybe imagine that you did something that you really didn't do uh, whether, you know, for good or bad. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, and it, and very late in the game, the, the ending was made because yeah. technically it didn't have an ending until what Andy, two months ago, one and a half months ago. Like maybe like two weeks or three weeks or something like that. It was really, really recent. I, I can uh, vouch for that. I've been in I... court. I, I've been I, in quarantine. I don't remember. I, I I was like when I was at the studio in March. The the story was not completely different, but quite quite actually quite different. From yeah. I think I think the challenging thing was also this idea that um, that memories don't you know when when you have something like intrusive thoughts, uh, which is something I suffer from. This is why that's that part is kind of coming a little bit personal into the whole mix. Uh, when you have memories that are coming as intrusive thoughts, they're not coming in perfect chronological order. So it's a little bit here and there, and it, it feels like these puzzle pieces that are kind of glimpsing here and there. Uh, so telling the story in a way that really puts some burden on the viewer of putting the puzzle pieces together, that seemed like an interesting challenge also. So it's there, you don't have this constant hand-holding that's just going on forever, uh, like kind of spoon-feeding every single thing. And then uh, it was actually it was actually Ton that said, you know, I think this thing, you know, deserves kind of a an ending, something to kind of end it on, like some kind of a finale that kind of wraps it up. 
And I was, I was very happy that he said that because I actually just assumed that we didn't have budget to do it. So <laughs> like, so like I was really we're afraid. Trying to save of, some, uh... <laughs> yeah, I was so afraid of, of, of suggesting it. So when yeah. he said it, I was really relieved. And then we had a bit of a, you know, conversation about what potential endings there could be. And the one we have right now is the, is kind of the one I pitched, which was the only one that I felt like really still held true to the concept. So it's still, it's not just, you know, tacking something on at the end, but it's really like wrapping it up. So for those that don't understand that she's running through her memories, hopefully at the end, when they see the end, it kind of clicks for them. I've you, talked for long enough. You think it could, have, it could have worked without, uh, without the ending? Uh, I think so, but I think that, you know, it's, it's always a little bit of a, a game of statistics of like, you make something and then you throw it out there to, to the general audience and then, oh, uh, 80% of the people got it. And then like, you know, 10% 10 of people just walked out. They were so confused. So there's <laughs> always that like a, a balancing act of like, what is too far? And if you, if you dumb it down too much, then everybody just hates it because like, oh, they're talking to me like I'm a child or whatever. So finding that balance was kind of interesting. And I think it, it could have worked without an ending, but I think we would have lost like half of the people that we have now oh. <laughs> that are like on board. Uh, like now that I look back, of course, it's, it's, it's easy to be wise in hindsight. Wow. It's so interesting to see the process also. You even had a, a bouncing ball at some point in the test. I'm looking at the, at the yeah. animation tests on the, on the Blender Cloud, where you can find all the files, by the way, and everything that it was made for this, uh, that was made for this film. Why, why a bouncing, bouncing ball? Why, why starting with a... Yeah, so... Uh, it's, it's more I, into I definitely... animation, less directing, but more sorry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The, so I definitely did start out with the character, but then at some point it's like, well, if, if I'm going to kind of pitch this as a broader idea, I have to be able to make a rough edit, you know, some kind of a layout of the entire idea and just kind of show it and get some feedback and whatnot. And I, I should, I really should not be doing that with the character because there's, you know, it has to do more with camera moves and all that stuff and like with the overall timing. So before I did the bouncing ball, I actually did a whole pass where all I did was like I made a, made little markers on the camera and I just parented to the camera where roughly the character would be. And then I just animated the camera doing most of the thing, just imagining that, oh, she's roughly in that spot. So I did a full run through of that and then, you know, got some feedback and I trimmed some things, fixed some things. And then at some point it was ready for the next thing, which was not adding a character, but adding a bouncing ball. And that way I could like, uh, alleviate some of the motion in the camera and kind of transfer it to the to the bouncing ball so the bouncing ball became more energetic and the camera could like take a back seat wow so there so there's also the the, um, the concept art you work together is it more like andy's uh, we, we're stepping into andy territory or do you all want to talk a little, a little I, bit together? actually no i actually would love for andy to talk uh, about vivian's concept art i think i've been oh, yeah. blah lying too much now <laughs> I'll mute myself. Okay, bye. You're kind of the director, eh? So, and animation director and animator. And uh, did, did you add any voice design, by the way, this time? Okay, so here's the thing. Somebody <laughs> tweeted, like, hey, did you do the voice of the cat screaming? And I'm like, no, I should have done it. That would have been perfect. Just or whatever. Oh, oh the baby. Dude. I don't know. <laughs> Well, yeah, actually. You've, you've done llamas and uh, whatever, uh, whatever the, the, llama, the, 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 the weird dog, is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chicken. And, yeah, exactly. Ah, oh, oh, Missing done. opportunity, anyway, man. Yeah. Okay, you need to make another one. <laughs> Other way, thank you. So, Andy, 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 are you the person to talk to regarding... Me? Yes, you. Hello, how are you? Um, hello, uh, I'm fine. It's great weather outside. It's amazing. I wish we could yeah. do this outside somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what, so what, what is your involvement in the project? Were you from the beginning? Were you... Um, no. No? I mean, I I think I, I stepped in about um, maybe four months before the whole thing was supposed to be finished and uh, like to, to help out with the rendering and everything. 
And um, that was about the same time as we we also had uh, our concept concept artist at the studio, Vivian. And um, this was actually one of the few projects where we actually had a, a concept artist there for the whole time. And um, that was that was really amazing because we like uh, every week you would see like she would come up with this uh, with a design for this for this whole um, vignette. So basically we we made it so that every week we would uh, we would focus on one individual segment of the film and um, that was for like first concept art and then the next week the modeling started on that also for a week and then the the next week the the rendering started on that so it was it was fairly tight for for a long period of time a week and per per section per yeah yeah we didn't always manage to do it because there was a lot of other stuff going on like some other projects but um but yeah that was that was our benchmark and oh man it was so great to have like to have her in the studio to um to have someone come in with a completely different mindset because i mean we're just blender guys and we're thinking in terms of like this this weird th weird third dimension and that kind of stuff hmm. and um for something that's non-photorealistic like this it was really uh, amazing to have someone with a fresh mindset come into this and um and i think that's that's really what shows when you see the final frame so we we really heavily tried to follow the concept art and hopefully we uh we did it justice Awesome. So we are talking here. We are talking actually about Vivian, Vivian, Vivi Kowski on Instagram. If you want to follow her, uh, her work, uh, but also you can find all the the artwork and the concept art that she made for Coffee Run on the cloud. So after, how was it even to to move from the concept art? Because it's yeah, it's great to have a concept artist, but then this also has to be done in three D in some way is it 3d is it 2d is it grease pencil is it ev is it blender internal is it workbench what is it <laughs> there is a little bit of everything in it <laughs> so um so yeah i think um the the most important thing when you have great concept art is to like have someone who really like who can translate it into another medium and uh yeah that was uh, maybe Julian can talk about that, right? Uh, I can take over. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> All right, Julian, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Who There's is someone uh, hammering go... outside? I hope you don't hear that. Ah, okay, it's, it's not <laughs> the done, right? Second, Julian started talking. Somebody outside started slamming. Yeah. Something. <laughs> Jesus. That that's okay. <laughs> so anyway, Julian, you uh, were involved from the, with from the beginning on the project, right? Pretty much, yeah. It's like, I think I was the second person to come on board uh, after Hjalti, who started the entire thing. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I remember when the task was pretty much just to, uh, like, we had this layout, and it was just like, okay, how can we spend, like, just some weeks of just uh, in between projects, we have a little bit of time, let's just make it pretty. Uh, like, let's just slap some shaders on top, light it, and make it a bit more pretty. And uh, it was not a full open movie project at that time, but then it like evolved into like this entire thing. When we call, when um, we say and, a full open movie project, we mean something as big as Spring or Sintel yeah. or like uh, Cosmos, or we also yeah, have these tiny uh, projects like the Daily Dweebs or Caminandes, or in this case, Coffee Run. Uh, I don't know where I would put it on the scale. It's not quite it's not on spring level because we didn't spend that much time on it but uh but yeah it, it's definitely small a smaller open movie project but it's it it was intended to be way smaller originally i think that's also what kind of inspired this like minimalistic art style where at first i actually have like uh, i i made like some drawovers of uh, healthy's layout way in the beginning where i was just like slapping some stuff on top how can we do this with like uh, as with as simple as an art style as possible. So let's just work with solid colors, gradients, uh, hard shadows, uh, and then eventually Vivian came on board and just like everything started clicking into place. Uh, but we still kept that really minimalistic art style where like perspective itself is kind of shifting and being skewed, and sometimes the the ground is is really like tilted and 
it's uh, like I think the park is actually a really interesting example. Um, I, I like uh, you, you should have one of the links, but I can also um, yes, share I... my. Which one is Sorry? it? Environment modeling. Uh, yeah, the park modeling one. Um, Wait, which, which is like that. one of the earlier play blasts of while I was modeling the, the park. Oh. Um, and it's really interesting where like uh, it's it's actually quite a headache of like cl clicking all of the pieces together because it's not just uh, that it's like it, it looks pretty simple. Uh, most of it is actually like, pretty much traced from the concept because we don't need to work with like very intricate shapes. The sh uh, shading, the way we lit the movie, the style is like washing away a lot of the de details anyway. So it's very forgiving. But how, uh, so I was just able to like block out a lot of stuff but quickly. How, how do you deal with perspective in this case? Because the yes. like I think Hjalti was the one to come up with, uh, okay, maybe this can be like a, a circle. Like how do you make something that runs and loops at the same time? Yes. I, I can share my screen right now. I have Blender yeah. open actually. Uh, let's just entire screen. Uh, oh no, I can't. I need to uh, share Blender specifically. Okay, can you see it? I can, yes. So this is just the park modeling file that I was working in. And it looks pretty straightforward where it's like there's the cemetery, it goes into the park, and then it keeps going and going. But you can already see that we went for kind of a globe structure of the entire set. So it's like uh, curving and curving further, like kind of going into itself the further the the scene goes along yeah uh and that is actually done with like having this big rig where every set is kind of like hooked up to so at any time i could go in here and i could just go in and this is just everything straight and i can go in the rig and turn on the curvature which is a huge headache, for example, in, in these areas where the animation is transitioning from one set to the next, and you need to work in the curved version. Otherwise, uh, the character Hale is not grabbing the things she should grab. Like, ah. uh, this was co a constant reminder of uh, you're trying to work in the flat version because then everything, everything aligns with the global axes of Blender and it's really easy to model things if it's all flat. Yeah. But the version that you need to work with eventually is the curved version. And the park set is so huge hmm. that uh, uh, you need we needed to segment it into three pieces. So the ground is actually split. And this is stuff that you don't even notice in the film. Uh, no. Because the textures are just transitioning seamlessly. Uh, but for the animation and modeling, it was a constant thing to remind yourself about. Uh, but it's also like it, it doesn't look very deep or like uh, there's it doesn't look like, like there it is that big. But then once you step out and you're just like rotating around the set, it's it can be deceiving how large these sets actually are and how the perspective is just skewed. Yeah. So that everything visible is is just placed right so that uh, before we get to the park you don't see a lot uh, a lot of it and uh, uh, is is anyone else seeing his screen being updated because i have just a frozen picture and i'm imagining what? all the things that he's no doing. so i want to ask no Pablo. i i see you moving okay okay <laughs> you got me worried then it's just me i was like oh man like people want to see this probably and no frozen. well no i i see you guys frozen but the the thing is moving okay well I as think. long as the chat is not complaining uh no chat is fine he frozen yeah people are frozen you, like it just just move on <laughs> okay think... okay good 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 uh, but yes, it's like it's very much tailored around what is visible in the concept art, and then how can we arrange these things so that it's visible for just the right amount of time in the right place. Yeah. So that's why some of these elements are so far away because with the amount of parallax that we have, we need these we need to see these elements for a certain amount of time. They they are not allowed to like whoosh past as fast as they would if they would be too far in the front. Are they, are they um, model skewed as well? Like if you go see some. Oh of them? yeah, if you if you see the uh, oh god oh god. Uh, Just show the show the dirty laundry from the hey. front. It's yeah. like it's rotated. It's all just kind of skewed into place where there's no level in any set. 
it's all just based on how do we want to see the, these things. Like perspective is just whatever we want to have. <laughs> wow. Did you model it like that? Do you use uh, like uh, lattices or? Uh, uh, I, I don't I, I did use scope mode for quite a bit of it actually there's like some uh, uh, some new features that made some things quite nice to model where like for example these bushes it's originally just like a, a sphere that I sculpted into place and then I was just like using the new face maps a uh, face sets sorry and I was just painting and face sets smoothing them a little bit and then extracting the geometry and then I had immediately one of these bushes so it was really about like modeling these things as fast as possible because I had like uh, a week for each one of these sets uh, plus any other additional tasks that would like be thrown in like fixing some things here and there with the characters or even like giving some blender feedback because there's always blender feedback coming in at the same time. <laughs> wow. Regarding the shading, do you or like the, the this is how is it even done? Is it EV or cycles? It's EV. It's EV. Everything uh, is EV. So you could see this in EV. Why don't you see it in EV? Uh, with this specific file, because it's the modeling file, it didn't have the shaders yet. Uh, so it's all just uh, flat colors. And then afterwards, the, the shaders got added on top uh, in the for the lighting files and everything. Uh, there's actually a bit of a headache going on with uh, you want this curvature, but then you need to like the easiest way to get that is to like import the rig and hook everything up but then you can't link the set back into the rig because that's just one big circular linking but yes. you should be able to see the lighting there the collection is i think it's in the scene uh yes uh, but the shaders are not so right, they are is that uh, the oh that's wait the, yeah. yes uh, you are correct for <laughs> some of the modeling files the shaders are actually missing uh but yes in this case i can just go directly into rendered in the viewport and you can see all the shaders as they are That's in the film. Beautiful. It looks beautiful. Yeah. The only thing really missing is the motion blur, which got added on top via cycles. I think like Andy can can talk, talk about, about that. it later. I'm I'm interested oh, yeah. about the, the rigging here. I see a lot of rigs here. How do you even rig something that it's skewed? Do you rig it skewed? Do you how? Oh. I didn't rig the city. <laughs> oh yeah, Matt. Uh, no, not not Matt. Uh, uh, Hjalti, do you want to talk about the, the city rig? <laughs> I, I could just mention it real briefly. Um, I I shot myself in the leg basically. I was like, wouldn't it be great if? And then uh, I got totally <laughs> committed to this insane idea that like, oh, because it's like her memories, then like the ground has, doesn't have to be the ground, bro, or whatever. I don't know. And so it, it's, you know, there was that idea that like, oh, it's the cyclical thing. So what if the curvature is going down? And so I made this insane rig that like, I don't know, like uh, probably two months later, I had to like tweak something and I came back to it and it was like looking at the work of a madman and I had like <laughs> no memory of doing some of these things, but it, it totally worked. And I made a nice little interface and, you know, I, I I made everything kind of make sense and, and it was relatively easy to work with uh, for the most part. I mean, it, will you, it was... Will you do it differently if you do have to do it again? Yeah, there's a couple of things I would do differently. I think the number one thing would be that I would very much name everything in a certain way, in a certain manner. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I think that's <laughs> the main thing. Well, okay, so just to explain real briefly. So um, any everything was basically animated as if it's a straight thing. So it's a straight city. Yeah. And everything's animated. But then at some point, I had this idea, and then, okay, every chunk of the city is going to be curved. And then every single one of them needs to curve from a certain point and a certain amount. And I need to be able to control that. But then how do I make the character follow? Because that, yeah. if I, just, I can't curve them, and I don't want to reanimate anything, and I, you know... We had I had uh, another animator, Pablo Fournier. He was also working on this, and I didn't want to hassle him with having to reanimate some of that stuff. So my really cheap solution was basically, let's have a bone that's there. Actually, two bones, one for the character, one for the camera. And then that there's... Uh, so <laughs> imagine it's like a spine, okay. and it, cur it curves, okay? 
And then there's another spine laid on top of it. And it's unfurling itself as you're playing the fill. But when, it, like, but at very particular moments, it unfurls. So, man, this is just such a weird thing to explain. But it totally makes sense. And if I had the graph to show you. You made a graph know. yourself. No, no, I'll, I'll do it now. I'm no, sorry. no, 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 you don't have to. It's okay. <laughs> <We can. laughs> Trust me, the science checks out. <laughs> Wow. So you did that rigging. What about the characters? Well, what about the, the how oh, many yeah. characters there are in yeah, the film? There are many. Well, first of all, we all know that the city rig would have went a lot smoother if you just asked me to do it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, right. What so, were you doing back then? Um, so the main character was, of course, originally Rain, and uh, that eventually evolved into this, uh, I guess, uh, uh, spin-off of Rain, um, but yeah, because this whole thing started with the with the with the rig rig test uh, animation, um, that rig was in fact a work in progress when this was started. So uh, I actually found in your healthy in your weekly folders the first uh, coffee run videos. Are you okay if I show those? <laughs> yeah, do it. I think even on the cloud, there's uh, there's like a bloopers folder. Don't worry, it's, it's mostly going to embarrass me, not you, so you're fine. <laughs> okay. okay, let's see if I can do this. Share entire screen. Yes, share the entire oh, screen. Boy. I'm uh, just, I... I'm just uh, showing now that uh, Rain, when we mention Rain, Rain is the character of the stylized character workflow tutorial on the Blender Cloud. Indeed, I am failing because it wants to share both of my screens instead of just the one. Just the one. Oh, uh, sorry. Show, I uh, want to... How wait, many screens wait, wait. do you have? Ah, uh, two. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Arg. It's okay. <laughs> take your time. We are... take, take your time. I mean, I, I guess it. we can also just like uh, I can mention like uh, it. Like, it's it's interesting how like it started with rain, which is like this kind of stylized but still detailed character, and we had to heavily simplify that character to fit like a new art style. So it's interesting that it's like this high poly character with like a very intricate rig, but we see it only from a distance and everything is flat. Um, yeah. uh, ah, awesome. Oh, it's, it's, it's coming. I only managed to share a window, but we'll see if this works. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> State okay, of are the you art. Seeing this? Right, so uh, this is the first file that I can see being named Coffee Run, but there might have been something before this. So this is a compilation of all the times the rig has exploded due to still being worked on. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, this was, oh, there you go. Now it's kind of functioning. And then probably it's going to stop functioning in a second. So what are we looking at here? So you were working on the rig at the same time. Yeah, the movie while was, uh, was animating. And I mean, because he was just testing the rig, right? So it, uh, it made sense. Yeah. And then uh, slowly the project started building up and I was still working on the rig. <laughs> uh, so let's see, wait. Yeah, that's that. And then next week what happened i was working on the face <laughs> so that happened i don't know if you can still see it uh yes unfortunately i can see it <laughs> <laughs> yes and then so i fixed that and then that happened okay so i fixed that and then that happened so i fixed that and then that happened <laughs> <laughs> wow mega so, rain <laughs> so so anyways that was um yeah the it, it was a rough start let's just say that um, and that's because for this rig, I was still building it bone by bone, constraint by constraint, because um, that was basically the first rig that I did uh, for the studio. Um, and as far as I was concerned, at least the, the purpose of that rig for me was to find out how the animators work and what kind of features they want. And uh, also when they don't want their character to do this. <laughs> um, so based on that, um, I started working on um cloud rig which is a, a rigify feature set uh specifically for the, my beloved animators so as for the rest of the characters in in the movie every other character except for the main character was rigged with cloud rig and uh, that means they were like kind of procedural almost but not really um so cloud rig is based on rig it's a it's a module rigify modules or yes it's cloud rig is something that you can 
slap on top of Rigify or add it to Rigify, if I could say. Um, and so then I'll have, you know, a cloud rig uh, arm and a cloud rig leg, and I press generate and it gives me rig. And um, I don't, I, I have videos of this, but I don't know where because I was planning to share my screen. But alas, it is only allowing me to share my both of my screens, which is probably going to be yeah, super awkward. I hear you clicking, but the screen is uh, dead. I don't know if you're showing something. Um, now it's your face. I don't know. When I go and show, show entire screen, it just it does this. Wait, it's gonna be like double thing. Yeah. Okay. Just uh... disaster. No, I uh... <laughs> just just keep going. Show show something. Okay. 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 So Let me see if I, I know this. you can only see this barely, but um, I mean, this won't be any news to those of you who have used Rigify. But so here is a here's the meta rig, and so. On this one, I would add uh, rig types to the beginning of any um, like part of the body that needs its own rig. And so, for example, you know these arms are cloud limbs, and then there's one for the fingers and the spine and all that. And so I was working on this because for the background characters, well, we had a whole horde of them that Julian made. Uh, and so all of those needed to be rigged, and I'm the sole rigger around here. So I had to rig all of these guys in a reasonable amount of time. So that's why I needed a solution that could uh, do that quickly. With the same and so with the same rig. So is is it like Rigify on asteroids? Do you plan to uh, migrate some of these features to Rigify? Yes, I would like to, but uh, I will need to uh, figure that out with um, Alexander, who is like the current, uh, you could say, maintainer for Rigify. Yes, some of these features, but not all of them, I would like to put into, into Rigify itself. Um, because like while I was working on, on this, um, I ran into some things with Rigify that I, I, I feel like could be improved. But uh, I, I do want Cloudrick to stay as a separate feature set because there's no need for it to be like included in uh, Rigify itself. But who knows, maybe that will happen too. Um, but to answer your question, though, it's not quite the same rig, it's just that um, like I have this meta rig here and oh, this is totally going to fail. But let's say I want to rig a different character whose arm is up there, then I can just do that and uh, press this and it should work. See? Although, yeah. Hmm. Now the arms are up there. So yeah, uh, again, it's... okay, I don't know why these bones are here, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, because this is like a super old version. Uh, well, this was using a super old version of, uh, of CloudRig, so some things are misconfigured. That's why these things are tiny and whatnot. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. So this allowed me to rig all of these guys in, uh, like, I mean, the initial rigging only took a couple of days, but then, of course, uh, had to improve the formations endlessly and uh, fix bugs and etc. so that it doesn't ex explode, like you saw in those videos. Somebody's Which asking, a few times. is it like hmm? Mixamo auto-rigging? No, it's it's like Rigify. If you haven't seen Rigify, uh, check out Rigify. It's uh, built in Blender add-on. Um, it is not like Mixamo because Mixamo can. I mean, Mixamo is like even more insane than this, um, kind of. Although I would also say more limited, because in Mixamo you just you just upload the character, you point. This is my knee and this is my elbow, and it just generates a rig for you like that. Um, but actually, I don't think Mixamo, it probably can generate a control rig for you as well. But uh, as far as I know, Mixamo is mainly used for like uh, retargeting like stock animations and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I would definitely say it's more like Rigify because it is Rigify. It is a part of Rigify. Awesome. Well, indeed. Yeah, it did pretty awesome. <laughs> um, and you use everything for the character. Did did um, did you rig any of the props? Uh, sure. Oh, okay. Actually, I mean, is, if there anything interesting, I know you rig them, but not, is, not every rig is, is interesting. <laughs> I do want to touch on maybe the the tablecloth, which oh. like probably didn't even occur to anyone that that would be in any way like complicated. Really? There's a, there's, a, there's a there's like a, a four second segment in the film where she jumps over a table, pulls off the tablecloth, and then uses it as a freaking parachute. And to be fair, 
most of that credit for pulling that off, I think, goes to to Pablo Fournier for 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 animating that. Yeah. Um, but oh god, where's the where am I going? Coffee run, uh, props. T take your time. So that was actually three different rigs. There's a tablecloth, tablecloth grabbed, and tablecloth parachute, and uh, Pablo would switch between them. And yeah, I don't even know what to say. It's uh, it's it's it, it was it was it was tricky. <laughs> Uh, how does this even work anymore? I don't remember. Why don't you use physics? Why don't you use the cloth? <laughs> exactly, that's what I said. <laughs> I mean, to be to be fair, like we did use the cloth brush for the table True. for the table cloth uh, <laughs> because it's like kind of shaky driven. So there's three different shapes to it. Uh, I, I went in and like uh, originally like blocked out the shape with the new cloth brush to test it out, and it actually worked. Really. <laughs> Yeah, you get like actually a quite workable base shape from just using the cloth brush. Uh, it's, it's you need to be careful using it because it can be quite unpredictable. But if you then hook that up with a nice rig, you can you can get something going way faster than using cloths, in, <laughs> or at least something also more predictable. But hey, where's the fun of rigging it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Now, to be fair, now I I guess. Like once I've seen the final result, I'm like, okay, I guess you couldn't do that with this simulation. No. Mm. Like for sure. Uh, so yeah, it makes sense in the end. Cool. Oh yeah, this is the parachute version. So at some point, the cloth secretly swaps from the previous rig into this one. Secretly. Uh, and yeah, yeah, secretly. Like there's no way you'll be able to tell even if you look very carefully because Pablo is a wizard. Wow! <laughs> well, yeah. Make a video. Yes, Make it. Put it on the cloud. No. <laughs> <laughs> nobody needs so much. So much hacking. So much trickery. No, nobody needs to know. Yeah, it can stay our secret. Okay. <laughs> but now nah, maybe maybe we'll do something like that. Oh yeah. Anyways, that's uh, that's probably the most interesting of the props. Uh, yeah, I had to read all the other ones too, but nothing crazy, I guess. All right. Just... Thank you very much. So. Rendering. This is another another interesting or a uh, headache that I I imagine it was because 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 you have every pretty much every shot in at least two stages, right? Because each like you have yeah, the same exactly. set but twice. Yeah. How? How? how why? <laughs> Before you dive into it. Uh... I Disclaimer. have to go a meeting in four minutes. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, oh, right. Great to see you guys. Oh, no. Thank you for everything. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. All right. So, Andy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, doing everything twice, basically. So, um, I mean, I can I can just show you. Like, I have the file right here. If yes, this yeah. uh, actually works, uh, let me see. How do I share? Share screen, a and window? then you can choose the application, uh -huh. I think. Blender, that's the application. It's Blender. Well, let me make this. You should be able to see this, right? I am, yes, yes. This that I okay. had it set up for the weird. <laughs> so continue, yeah. please. Okay, so um, here we have the uh, apartment file. So this is basically the file that uh, uh, Julian would hand over to me, and I would just go and shade it. And the shading was done pretty much on the same the same time as the lighting was done, so it was jumping back and forth between two files, and uh, and yeah, and at some point uh, we were like, okay, well she's going through all these different stages of her life, and uh, and all of them have to kind of look different, and and uh, yeah, sure, let's just uh, have one one lighting over here and one lighting over here, and then we just transition the camera through it, and Yaldi was like, no. I want to have this uh, amazing transition effect with, uh, you know, with all the stuff going on. It should be like painting and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was really not hard uh, at really... all. We never no. done that. You never <laughs> done this kind of. So um, yeah, I could imagine that in a few months, um, we would probably be using uh, library overrides for this or uh, dynamic overrides, I think they, they'll be called. But um, currently, that system is kind of a little bit shaky. And we had to, uh, we had to, quote unquote, improvise to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, 
uh, basically, um, what you can see here is um, just the the model um, of the entire set, and every one of these things has a material. And um, you can see that, um, yeah, what I see in the viewport is basically what we get in the film. And uh, here, for example, is the wall shader. And um, this is using a shader node group that uh, Simon Thomas made. Uh, he's our shading uh, overlord. Hmm. And um, yeah, and this, this is basically the shading of the entire film. And um, then there's a bunch of other nodes, but like every single material material goes into this kind of thing here, which is called a uh, gate apartment. And all that node does is it has two reroutes. And what we could do via Python is to flip between those reroutes. So for example, here I have this script. What? <laughs> yes, let me explain. So, so the reason we did it like this is because obviously we're working with libraries, and um, in the shot files themselves, we don't have any access to the shading information, like the the shaders. We can't change anything because uh, all of this is linked in. It comes from another blend file, and we cannot touch it. So we can, however, indirectly influence it with uh, Python because everything in Blender is controllable via Python. But as soon as you want to override like the entire material and make it look like a completely different thing, it makes sense to like use a different shader for that. And um, then, of course, what you can do is just like plunk those two shaders into a mix node and then put it in the output. And uh, then you can somehow control with the mix how um, like in this file the mix is one hundred percent, and in this file the mix is zero percent. And then depending on that, you get a different look. Yeah, but hey, the problem between, is, yeah. yeah, you can you can script that basically, and which is totally totally a good thing to do. And in cycles, you could probably do that. But we're working with Eevee, which has a limit for uh, the amount of shaders uh, and, um, more importantly, the amount of subsurface scattering shaders. It's not Eevee; because... it's a graphics card, though. It's, a... <laughs> it's a graphics card. Yes, because some yeah. graphics cards we have more, and on some are less. Well, also, um, it's like EV has a physical limit. Like I actually oh. discussed this with Jeroen. And um, like the, the reason why all this stuff looks so amazing is because we cheat. We put subsurface scattering on freaking everything. <laughs> everything has gives us SSS. As everything. The and, um, and the cool thing is, is that it's, uh, it kind of smooths out the normal. So everything gets this really soft look. And um, the more you 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 uh, increase the size, the more flat it kind of looks, and the perspective is kind of cheated. And like that's how we got it to look so much like the concept art, because we we just uh, averaged out all the norm the normals with uh, subsurface scattering. Uh, However, wow! So that's so the, the reason. Wow. Continue. <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry. I'm just a bit mind. Sorry. No, no. It's okay. It's like while I, the. This is the, like this was an entire struggle uh, to to find all out all this stuff and uh, yeah, going back to to this kind of switching setup. So of course, when Blender has a mix node that con connects these two very big shader trees, um, Blender obviously thinks that they all belong to the same thing, and it belongs like it calculates everything. And um, that what that's what we're cheating here basically by actually physically. Disconnect well physically uh, disconnecting it via Python, we can cheat Blender into thinking that one thing belongs to the other. Long story short, we in every file in every shot file we have the script called reroute.py, and um, in the end we're passing the socket information here. So you can see there's this it's it's called switch node tree, and we're passing the node tree, and there's a zero. If we turn this zero, you should see. Crunch, crunch. Here we go. Oh. It's connected to the first output. And I think that's, I mean, it might be a bit convoluted, but I think this is pretty awesome to like to connect things on the fly. Like it opens a whole bunch of possibilities. So yeah, that's how uh, basically um, each of the files um, has has one portion of the set already overridden into the next state. So yeah. every set has an in inactive state, and we can flip to that. And whenever we are going to the next file, um, 
because every every one of these little vignettes is uh, is one uh, blend file, basically. So every shot, quote unquote, in this film is a blend file. Every and shot. Every, yeah, everything has different lighting, and then we're um, what we're doing is we're uh, fading from one file into the next one as we're progressing through the scenes um, using some kind of dynamic paint effect. How is that? Uh, it, it looks like painting. Is it like uh, is it composite on? Is it what is it? What All is right. It? Um, <laughs> well, it's uh, it's a bit. So it's the the idea was that we would uh, we would do this kind of painterly effect because um, yeah I mean the concept art was pretty flat, flat and graphic and we we thought let's let's try and to make this look like watercolors and um, in in Blender we have this amazing feature called dynamic paint and um, that's that's already a great uh, starting point. So um, I think on the file on the cloud, I have a bunch of files like with a bunch of tests um, showing um, showing a few of these setups. Um, so in the end, we we just made a mock-up of every single set, and uh, the file is still loading. So yeah, it's gonna I'm, take a while. <laughs> I'm showing uh, other stuff. Cool. Um, I just transition. have to open this file. Yes. So, do you do everything? You do the lighting for everything? For uh, whole... yeah, yeah, I did. So the whole film had about ten different shots or or vignettes, as I like to call them. Um. Yeah, I have the transition file open. Should we just uh, quickly go over it? Yes, please. I I think I have a, a breakdown of this on the cloud as well. But but yeah. So we have the transitions and um. Like the whole film, pretty much all of the sets are kind of line, lined up on a string, like uh, Hjalti was explaining. And um, we have these um, these little mock-up geometries. So I kind of went in and uh, into every single set, and I blocked it out because I wanted to have a very simple geometry of it. And um, each of those uh, blocked out geometries is basically uh, then UV mapped. So here we have the UV map, and it's just a light light map uh, pack, like an, an the built-in auto yeah, yeah an automatic uh, UV unwrapping, just really really stupid. And <laughs> then um, we use that as a basis for our uh, dynamic paint canvas. And uh, dynamic paint is great because you can basically just um, take a few meshes and then use them to uh, to apply the, apply this kind of painting, growing paint effect, and um, yeah, we did that for every set. So this entire file has all the sets lined up, and uh, we have these uh, these camera marker regions here. I don't know if you see that. Yeah. yeah. Um, each of these segments where we go from one transition into the next one is uh, does have a dynamic paint uh, built in, basically. So as we're going into the next set, we are uh, building up the transition. And uh, so at the end of the transition, everything should be basically colored completely white, which means that we can use that as a mask to fade from one composite setup to the next one. And those frame sequences are what we used in the compositing. If wow. you're interested, I can open the compositor file as well. Um, I think we have some questions in the in, <laughs> sure. the in the chat, but I'm actually looking at Over the, the uh, I'm looking at your tutorial on the cloud, actually, where we see some of that. Actually, did I, did I get it right? Is there is a file called creating the scene transitions? Oh yeah, yeah. I made a walkthrough uh, for all the aspects I was involved in, basically. So that's uh, like. Uh, first, an, an introduction of how the whole file system is laid out, so we know where everything ends up, and then there's some shading, and then the transitions, and then I do. I think it's almost like an hour of uh, of, of a rundown of the entire composite. The entire composite breakdown. Into... Yes. Yeah. Fifty minutes. Wow. <laughs> it's very detailed. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, wow. okay. Uh, I think maybe we can point people to this beautiful. And, and tutorial that you just made you're crazy so you've been involved with uh, rendering all the previous open movies would do you think the, do, would you say this is this was the most uh, complex aspect of compared to other previous open projects 
What did you find in this one that you didn't find before? That it was like, oh crap, again, something hard to do or something like, <laughs> why can't yeah. be easy <laughs> for once? Oh my god! I well, I mean, uh, all of them is different. And by the way, I haven't been on all of them. You've done Sintel, so um, <laughs> well, I wasn't but there. Sintel wasn't even Blender. In, it was a it was a weird engine. So, but you Blender were like you, you were while, like yeah. you were in the live action Tears of Steel. You were in Spring, of course. You were in all the the Dwarfs, for example, which is a cartoon. But no, it's not not cartoon. It's not this kind of cartoon. Right. Well, I mean, uh, with this one, it was like it was the first one where we really tried to embrace Eevee. And like we also decided to because Eevee is this kind of thing that's meant to do kind of PBR stuff, but you can do some non photorealistic rendering in it. And um, and then what you what was really um, amazing to see with this film is that like the 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 benefit of having a, a real time render render. Uh, non-photorealistic stuff in the viewport, you can just make it look exactly like you like you envision it to be, and uh, it's all real time. Like you can tweak the lights in real time, and it renders super fast. and And that was really that was really amazing. Do you did you miss anything? Like uh, I don't know, outline rendering. Did you ever think of adding outlines, for example? There are there are ways of doing it, but like it's not like having freestyle. Did you miss freestyle? Did you try it even or land PR? Um, yeah, we used. Um, I didn't use freestyle specifically for this project, but I've used it for uh, another work in progress thing that we've been working on. But um, yeah, the the thing about it is that it's not really that immediate, and I think, as I understand it, Land PR currently is very um, is still uh, uh, it's a bit yeah very experimental. Early, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but I would love to check it out. But um, yeah, with this project, we we didn't really want to go for uh, cartoon outlines or something like that. So it was for, a decision made, not not yeah. like a limitation, and you were saying. Yeah, but also, of course, looking at what we can achieve with EV and, uh, you know, under under the time constraints that we had. Motion blur. How do you do the motion blur? <laughs> right. So um, the motion blur, uh, you know, this, the, the project uh, was very... Um, uh, wait, wait a second. So I think in the early stages, we, uh, we decided for, to, like go for no motion blur and then Shalti did a few tests and the problem is because you're like you the camera is just whizzing by so fast that you need some kind of motion blur to make it not strobe in your face all the time and um so um ev does have camera motion blur which is great however the problem is is that we're using a, a rigged camera and the camera is parented to an em uh, uh, not to an empty uh, to an armature and currently, Eevee doesn't support that. Uh, we could have just converted the camera to uh, like, uh, like bake actually it apply it, yeah. uh, just bake bake down the camera animation. But of course, as the camera was changing, uh, we couldn't really do that. And then, um, yeah, I tested it. And it, 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 it didn't, didn't work. work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what we did is we rendered. Uh, we rendered an entire uh, ID pass and motion vector pass for uh, in the whole film. Uh, for um, in cycles, just uh, 32 samples, uh, super quick. But um, th what that gave us the motion vectors, um, also with everything relative to the to the camera movement, which was super great. And then we used uh, Cryptomat heavily in compositing, which we also got uh, through cycles. But um, that was the only thing we really did in cycles for this film. So if you had motion blur in EV and Cryptomat, you wouldn't even use cycles. Oh yeah, totally. By the way, there is one shot in this film that is done with cycles. And oh. I guess, I, I bet you guys won't guess which one it is. Oh, leave your <laughs> comment down below <laughs> saying which one. And it's not what you think it is. Anyway. So yeah, really? we, we did the we did the whole motion blur in uh, in post in the compositor using vector motion blur. Wow, that is also part of the detailed compositing breakdown. Yeah, we're watching it. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, 
I think that answers pretty much everything I had in mind for the questions. But we have do we do have some questions from the uh, Blender Today thread. Not so many actually, eight, eight questions, and I bet there are some that are not related to this because I I didn't ask specifically like, hey, don't make uh, questions outside of uh, of of Coffee Run. The first one though is like by Thomas says, I love the animation so much. In fact, that I wrote a list of the differences between scenes. There are many more small tidbits of changes, but these were the ones I felt were way more notice noticeable. Let me know if I miss anything. Oh my gosh, maybe this is for Hial well for the for the entire team. Yeah. That's, That's amazing. That's yeah. YLT. Like he will get really happy if he knows that there's actually already the the YouTube crowd that's like picking and choosing all of the clips and uh, rearranging it. Oh my God, there's like a secret story being told in the background and no one ever knew. Uh, that's like, like, I think we really wanted to di have people dissect this movie. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically here Thomas writes the first scene. There is one cup of coffee at 11.05 and then 1 p.m., 1.30. Wow, I, well, I uh, this is very detailed. Thank you. <laughs> So, I didn't know ninety percent of these. I I have I didn't even notice this. Well, I only seen it once, twice, no, once with the when when we when when we went to the premiere. We went to the studio today. Yeah, find uh, all of the Suzans. Wh <laughs> what are there, Suzans? Oh yeah, sure, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah. All the Just say it, like, yeah, of course there are Susans, and then people are gonna <laughs> just just staring at it for hours. All right, there are exactly forty five Susans, uh, no and a half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now they won't rest until they find forty five of them. So the question, the next one, love the look of the white effects. They look a lot like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Is there a breakdown of how they are done? Of the of the effects, white effects. What is the white effects? Oh, the the the, the splash, right? The yeah, yeah, the coffee effect. Yeah, how how is that done? It's a geometry simulation. Simulation. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hand AI. animated by HLT. They were just uh, like hand blocked in spheres and geometry that he animated frame by frame. <laughs> AI. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, that's not AI. It's just like I. <laughs> <laughs> also, is so, it even that? It kind of, yes. Maybe it's just madness. When is the ba the game based on Coffee Run coming out? It's <laughs> a great question. It's a very good question. Actually, before that, the there is a question, question about Godot, which is an uh, open source game engine. So, is anybody involved in it, this game and all its assets are created common, so you can do whatever you want with it. And you're encouraged to <laughs> and do so. And the entire production repository is on the cloud, so you can just download it and make a game from it. Everything. It. Assets and production. Everything. It's 1.3 gigabytes, yeah. Gigawatts. 1.3... <laughs> 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 And this is everything. These are all the files. If I download one these one point three gigs, I'm gonna I'm gonna have everything. Yeah, it's like one spring shot. Amazing. And I only need uh, Blender two point eighty three. Am I right? Yep. Okay. The the beta. Soon to be official. Cool. Is there any feature? Yeah, for for the two point eighty three, the passes was added, right? The the EV passes was done yes. specifically for this. Any other feature that you remember? Uh, Next question. For the short film, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, the, for, the, for this film. Uh, we tested features, but nothing really well, you, was implemented because of it. You kind of have to reports. use, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Next question. I really like this style. Will you will you upload a breakdown on your Blender Animation Studios YouTube channel? I'm not sure. Well, uh, there are many. First, I think it's is uh, so. I get the, so this film. It's uh, it, it's uh, it was made thanks to the Blender Cloud subscribers. So it's fair that the Blender Cloud subscribers get 
the goodies first. So that's why uh, there is all this content that is made and it's exclusive for, for Blender Cloud subscribers at the moment. Eventually, uh, maybe we can make some of these like we did with previous projects, uh, like me make them available for everybody or put them on the um, on, on the Blender Animation Studio YouTube channel or the Blender Cloud channel or some of the channels that we do have. But for the I time- I think we made some of our files uh, public, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. I, I, I'm yeah. logged in, so I can't see which ones are free. But uh, you should check it out do you, if you know which ones. Um, at least my shading breakdown uh, is free. Oh, well, now I, I went incognito, and now I can see tutorials, rendering. Oh, yeah, lighting and shading. This one is free for everybody, so I'm going to share it in the chat. And the rest, it's, uh, it's on the cloud, which is only 10 bucks per month. And uh, you can just... It's like a Netflix for one month, but you get cooler stuff. And you help people make cooler blender and cooler stuff as well. Somebody has a noisy keyboard. Oh. <laughs> no, it's okay. It wasn't me. It's okay. Spot the gamer. Okay, so... <laughs> next question. Congrats on Coffee Run. It's so good. It got me to subscribe to Blender Cloud. Thank you, Slemon. Uh, I have one question this week. Is there any development happening on, for Dynamic GI in Eevee? I feel like it's the last thing needed to make it production ready. The last thing? Come on, what about Motion Blur? That's uh, more production ready. Dynamic Global Illumination? No, you have Global Illumination with uh, light props, but nothing else. Um, no plans for dynamic GI at the moment. I think the priority should be to to have a uh, motion blur, object motion blur, formation motion blur, and then improve the overall performance to make it better. Maybe PR, uh, NPR, and shader recompilation on the fly. Yes. Oh yes. And baking, baking Eevee. That's another mm, yeah. thing that we need. So I think that <laughs> that will make it production ready more than dynamic GI. Of course, it will be nice, but uh, priority should be put in those things and migrating to Vulkan. So people in Mac can use Eevee as well. Next um, question is about uh, Unreal Engine. So. I guess it doesn't concern you guys. <laughs> what do you think about the Unreal Engine? What, what could we have? Yeah, that's the thing. Like the moment something gets added to, you know, like Dynamic GI, like in Unreal Engine, that it's amazing. That uh, demo was insane. That's crazy. <laughs> insane. It was pretty cool. But I know the one universal rule is whenever you get something fast, you know how to make it really, really slow eventually. Absolutely. The moment the cycle gets <laughs> fast, then you make it slow somehow. It's like, hey, this is now 10 times faster. And then it's, no, we're going to find a way to make yeah. it slow. Put in 10 times more polygons. Or any anything, <laughs> really. It's just, just like, it is real time, not anymore. <laughs> you keep having stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So I think we cover all the questions and all my questions, at least. Do you have any questions for yourself? Do you think people are going to get the movie? People are going to... I'm, I'm curious about what people think of the movie in the chats. Are you going to sleep tonight or are you going to spend like keep watching the comments and like updating and refresh, refresh, refresh? Oh no, the chat is all German. Uh, oh boy. The chat is ger I don't oh, know. No, the I'm, I'm always coming. going to go through all the YouTube comments, and I will hate myself for it. But <laughs> don't do it. Don't don't, but, don't read uh, the comments. So far, like what I've seen on the reaction, I really like. like I'm really glad people like it. Yeah. What's not to like? Come on. Well, there is 56 people that don't <laughs> uh, don't understand how life is, <laughs> or maybe they never made a film themselves. This film, I think it's a good example when you think outside of the box and you try something completely different. Do you think this is the direction? Maybe Andy is a more veteran of the three here in the... What do you mean? I'm old? <laughs> veteran. Veteran <laughs> it means wise. Uh, because you you work in pretty much every other open movie in the past, do you think this is the direction the uh, Blender Animation Studio is going to go? Do you see benefits? Uh, compared to previous open projects working with this kind of style do you think maybe somewhere in between it could happen or are you still happy with uh, 20 hour render frames <laughs> in, in 
in uh, well i i uh, really like 20 hour rendering because it makes everything look amazing amazing but <laughs> joking aside i think like as a studio um we are really we're really growing and we're getting very mature in terms of the, the workflow so currently like we have we have an amazing team of people and i think we can we can pull off about anything as long as it's small enough but <laughs> as long um, as six minutes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think, um, yeah, what like what the guys have been doing recently with the Settlers project also shows that it's really fun to just make something uh, something small and like experimental and think about think outside of bo the box, like you said, and just make something completely different. And then you learn so many new things from that and you find like you find new ways of working. And uh, that's that's super amazing. Like it's great to not repeat yourself over and over again or again. So it's cool. Awesome. So spring two in Eevee. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? I, I think we should embrace it. And also Eevee is not just NPR. If you look at any work from Ian, he's or from uh, Daniel Beistad, for example, they use Eevee and it doesn't look like Eevee. So there is room for uh, both, <laughs> I think. Amazing. All right. So Julian, Casper, Demeter, Zadik. I think first time I say your last name, Demeter. Zadik. Zadik. Thank Not you. Not even all. close. <laughs> 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 well, the the the. Um, how do you? Let, let me what? put you all here. Zadik, don't worry about it. Zadik. I spotted an, I spotted a, an English message, and it's a question for me. What? Well, whether I'm gonna make a tutorial about rigging rain. Um, no, because that stuff was like a year ago. Oh no! But I'll do you one better, and I I do want to make tutorials about um, how to use CloudRig. Um, so yeah, but also CloudRig doesn't have a face module yet, or any face modules yet. So oh. uh, there's that. <laughs> All right, waiting for those. Uh, any estimated date eventually? Twenty twenty? Um, not. Uh, well, uh sure sure <laughs> oh, so, well i think the, the the animation and rigging and everything it's in blender could use some some love in that area like getting more examples more rigging more more rig materials uh rigify could get it more improvements i think it's in a good shape but it could still be even better it's good that you're you're staying you're even committing stuff uh well i've submitted a, like a couple patches only one for rigify which is still uh waiting for review and that's more just a suggestion um but that is my like i i do want to sort of uh like get into doing that um and yeah i would like to make commits for rigify but uh first i will need to um establish some uh report would you say with uh with alexander the maintainer yeah so see how he feels about that that is great news because it means it shows again that open movies Fifth Blender back and forth, in this case, the Blender Animation Studio and Blender Institute as well. So, that with that note, I think we are good to go. Thank you all for for tuning in. So, like, uh, kind of late. We were hanging out like a, an hour before, uh, and now we're here. So, thank you, everybody, on the live stream, also on the chat here for the questions. I think it's. Uh, you you need to rest now. Have a long weekend ahead. <laughs> Just don't stare at the, the the YouTube comments for too long. Hmm. Just wait until the good ones pop up all the way to the top, and then just look at the bright side. All right. Thank you, thank Andy. You, thank you, Julian. Thank, thank you, you thank the you. And thank you, audience. Thank you, audience. So uh, I I would just I would just say goodbye. So. Thank you everybody on the chat. I will see you again next week. Same place, same time. We're going to be uh, back into the regular schedule. We're going to talk about the new stuff in Blender because there were uh, some of uh, some of the, the new development that is going on. And uh, the week after, I'm going to make a recap again, like in the good old days before the... Oh, by the way, on Wednesday, we have a new Blender, 2.83 LTS. So um, maybe we should do a live stream on that. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe we should do it. Anyway, so... Bye and stay safe in five, four, three, two, one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Do -do -do -do. Wave.
Right. Da -da -da.